All right, so the first thing that I've noticed about, well, not the first thing, but one of the first few things I noticed, especially about my family. And, well, because like 95% of my interaction is with other Mexicans. <laughs> so uh, if you white people want to join in on this conversation, I guess you can, but you don't have to. How can I understand these people? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Let me just say that uh, we Mexicans, we are our worst enemies. And I see this with my straight guy friends because all of them are Mexicans. Or Hispanic, whatever, whatever you want to call them, but they're Mexican. You know, their parents are from Mexico, or they're from Mexico themselves. And it's like all the infighting, all the jealousy, all this like you have a new car. Well, I'm gonna get the same car, but better with bigger rims and this and that and yada yada. I'm like, get over yourself. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. And when we had this whole um, immigration debate, uh, well, you know, I, I just <laughs> I was I was watching uh, Punivision the other day, Univision, with my father, and it's like, you know, they talk about immigration like this is something that that is owed to us, and. Well, I mean, to us as in, like, Mexicans, you know, whatever. But I'm not an immigrant. But I will say that it is not something that is owed to Mexicans or those who are from Mexico or Hispanics or whatever. But it is something, I think, that you earned, right? And I think if you're here and if you are going to work and do a lot of good things and there's no issue that you should stay but here's the thing that i see within the mexican community i guess you can say in particular mexican man because it is them who actually come to this country and then later on they bring the wife or whatever and etc etc they bring la abuelita they bring uh tia Juliana to the United States for a new life. I don't know. And it seems to me that of all the immigrant groups that have come to this country, you know, you have the Irish, you have the fucking Italians, you have even the Cubans. I mean, those are different people from Mexicans. People say, oh, well, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, Nicaraguans, Brazilians, oh, they're Hispanic. No, 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 no. It's not the same. I mean, you may call it Hispanic, but it's not. And what what it is is, what I see is that there's, there's just too much infighting going on. With other immigrant groups, look at the Jewish people, the Jewish immigrant groups that came to this country. They fucking supported each other. And just the other day, I was at Ranch Market. And they were like waiting in line, you know. Wow, this line is so big. <laughs> There's a lot of people at the uh, meat shop, at the carniceria. Carne what, Jose? Carne what? Carniceria, which is the uh, the meat side of the uh, of the market. And there was just like a lot of people there, and I was like, "Fuck this! I'm not gonna spend my time here just." Standing around like looking like a fool, I'm gonna go to the <laughs> to the beer section and find some beer. And then, then all of a sudden, I heard you screaming. Like I turned my back and I went to the beer section, and I heard you screaming coming out of the out of the meat section. And it was these people in front of the, you know, where the the display, you know, where they have all the meat displayed, all the weird thing. You know, there's a section for meat, uh, Mexican <laughs> Mexican preparations. It's like all these weird meat that nobody like really looks at. Only like 
you know, your Mexican grandma. You're like pig's feet and pig's stomach and beef stomach and, you know, guts and all these, like, you know, the organs of the of the animal, the parts that you should eat. And then they have the chicharrones and they have those uh, these weird cheeses that, you know, you just, that section, there was this fight, like, between these two, it was no, no, two at the beginning, then, and like, five towards the end, five Mexicans, like, two chicks and three guys, they were going at it because somebody cut in front of them. And that's just an example. That's just recent. And there was, you know, I could go on and on and on about other things that I have uh, witnessed as a Mexican within my people. La raza. Hey, la raza. It's corrupt. He corrupt. <laughs> the Mexican government is corrupt. FIFA is corrupt. Oh, man, we complain about corruption all the time. FIFA is corrupt. The Mexican League is corrupt. <laughs> Univision corrupt. <laughs> That's true, actually. <laughs> FIFA is corrupt. Um, and then we see the infighting with like just general infighting. I, I see people getting jealous because somebody got a. New, here's what I see within my family, and we're all Mexicans. This, this is what I see, and there are a few of my relatives who are not legal. They are undocumented or illegal, whatever you want to call it. But they don't have papers. I don't think of papeles. Ay. And they. They um. I'll give you an example of what's going on. Another example, but this is one is really deep. Okay, it's really deep. Uh, they brought over my relatives. I think two or three guys from Mexico. I don't know if legally or legally. I don't know. I think one of them has a visa. I don't know what it is. So they came over, and there were these other relatives of mine who are here, right? And there's no fight about, like, who's legal or not. It doesn't really matter. It's just that if you're legal, if you are documented, uh, there's no problem. You know, there, it's it's a lot easier to get a job. So there were, there's this <laughs> – there's this uh, Yantaria, which is a, a tire place. <clears throat> I don't know what it's called. Yantaria. Yantaria de los Weyes. Something like that. I don't know. I forgot the name of it. And they were going to arrange for these three guys to get a jobs there. But the problem was that the assistant manager, it's like another hand kill, but Mexican style. <laughs> I sell tires and tires accessories. <laughs> he was there. And he was going to lose his job over this. Something was going on that that it was either these three guys or that guy. And so they just axed him. And the reason why he got axed is because, oh, here's the reason, here's the reason. Because he just bought a house. You get that? He bought a bigger house. He had a what, one of those fucking houses that we have here in Phoenix that are made of carton. They're made of cardboard. You know? I, no, it's not like a real... It's not like he was homeless or anything, like one of those cardboard boxes. No, it, it, there are houses here that are made of cardboard. They're just cheap. They easily uh, basically become r- run down. And you can see wear and tear. That house that he used to live on, it was pathetic. The doors were coming off. Uh, there were no stairs to the front door, so you had to kind of like make this huge leap into the fucking front door. It was just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It's like you had to jump over this moat to get into the front door. It was fucking, fucking ridiculous. So that guy, he bought a new house. It's actually well-constructed, made of wood, and it was bigger. It was a bigger house. And so, my relatives, who shall remain nameless, by the way, because I think they listen to the show, have indeed <laughs> take they taken his job away at 
de llantaria because he's making too much money and because he has a new home. And they're jealous of that. So my relative, they got fired. He had to go get another job. So he got another job at his warehouse. And so there he is at the warehouse, yada, yada, yada. And somebody calls into the warehouse two weeks after my relative gets a job there. Somebody from my family calls in and says that that guy has been smoking pot. He he does crystal meth. And so he almost lost his job there again. Like, like they're just like after this guy because he has a bigger house. It's not even that big. It's only three bedrooms. And I've been to that house. Uh, my house is bigger than his. And then, I yeah, that's one of the things that are go- that's going on with my family. Then, uh, there's this other... Oh, man, I can give you so many other examples of what's going on between Mexicans. How we treat each other like crap. How when we see somebody have something like a, like a nice thing, like a nice car or a, a nice bike. Even bikes. They fight over bikes. It's crazy. My people. You're crazy. You see, we need to be like the Jews, though. We definitely need to be like the Jews. The Jews, man, they they stuck together. I mean, they stuck together. And that's why, you know, they are able to succeed in this country. And nobody made a big deal about, except if you're the KKK, but, (laughs) or a teabagger. But if you want to succeed in this country is not you know how people it was hard work and no it's not part that's part of it but also it is who you know connections networking getting help from others to finding that job that you will work hard at and so that's the other issue we are horrible at communicating we uh, we mexicans we take everything sarcastically not seriously uh, when it comes to being serious, you know, when, when we have to be serious, it's business and whatever. We don't really take anything seriously, even if it's like our payroll or our livelihood is on is on the line. But then when the shit hits the fan and we start fighting and it's all over, it's too late. And the thing that I see, I mean, I'll just give you two examples. I'll give you another one if you want, but um, uh, yeah, there was another one where uh, one of my female relatives works at this insurance company, or local insurance company, and she didn't want to. <laughs> she gave this other guy that we know. He's kind of not a relative, but we know him, kind of thing. Because he has a a better car than everybody, including myself. I have a shitty car, but he has a really good car. I think it's a. Uh, is it? I don't remember what it was. But it was a better car. I think it was European. I don't know if it was a Mercedes. It probably was a Mercedes. And so he got a Mercedes. It's not one of those expensive ones. It's just one of those uh, common ones. I don't know, the C-Class or something like that. So this guy, you know, he's okay. He sells. Uh, he has uh, cell phone outlets, little kiosks out in these ranch markets and he makes good money out of that you know he has like four or five employees and he just went to get another insurance from this chick that we know uh he's our one of my cousins and she's like oh i gave him the most expensive the most expensive policy that we have just to just to nail him with it because that motherfucker he's driving around with that car like a smug he thinks he's he owns the world with that car yeah yeah there you go so this girl cousin of mine long long distance cons- uh, she's seventh in line i guess she <laughs> wrote him up the worst policy ever the most expensive one but I don't think that's bad, is it? Because if it's the most expensive one, it has all these good things on it. I don't know, maybe. Um, 
and uh, <laughs> and I'm like, how do you get? How is that getting back at that guy anyway? But see, my point is, why is she trying to get back at this guy? I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. He just has a Mercedes. What's wrong with that? Oh no, you can't have a Mercedes. Oh man, you know now he's a marijuana. He's a marijuana. He's selling drugs. <laughs> my people. Yeah. You see, Jose now drives a Mercedes. His name is Jose. Jose drives a Mercedes. He's corrupt. <laughs> he sells marijuana. I don't know. <coughs> so that's the problem. I don't know. Um, how should we solve it? I, I, stop being so... There's a word in Spanish. Mañoso. Okay? And I don't know how to translate that. I just want to say it. <laughs> and uh, you just have to be so fucking... How about this? Stop being so shitty with people. We, Mexicans, even those who are born here like me, we need to stick together. And um, we have to kind of follow the example of the Jews. You know, there are a lot of uh, act- activistas within the Mexican community, you know, the uh, immigration activists uh, who say, oh, you know, who invoke black civil rights, MLK and all that. No, well, but that's a whole different thing. We came here voluntarily. The blacks, uh, not really voluntarily, but... <laughs> The blacks have a, you know, their history, their thing is different. Our thing is that we can contribute a lot to our society. But if we start to destroy each other mentally, physically, and damage property and all that. <laughs> um, and I've seen that. I've seen, uh, like, uh, one guy a while ago had, uh, uh, he took out a Ford Focus. Within two days, it, had, it was all scratched. Somebody uh, broke one of the mirrors and broke the was it the front of the back well what one of the head, uh, one of the lights and uh, because he has a good car it's a brand new car so for focus i mean it's not like a fucking lambo or anything oh it's, but it's a brand new car it's a brand new car Jose. must be doing marijuana <laughs> How come they think that every time somebody gets a new car, he's selling MJ? What is that about? I don't know. Uh, my people are weird. My people are... We're not consistent also. I mean, that's another part of that we have. We have several issues. I mean, here's what I find funny about white supremacists. When I heard about this Steve Scalasi, what is his name? Steve Scali, I don't know what his name. That guy that from the Republican Congress, <clears throat> uh, Steve Scalise. There you go. Uh, that guy. Well, he was caught talking to a white supremacist group like ten years ago, and well, that that group says, "Well, white people are this, and white people were so great." I'm, I'm like. I mean, that's a true racist organization, isn't it? When you say that, you know what a racist is? A racist is somebody, is, is somebody that thinks their race is better. I'm not a racist because I don't believe that my race is better at all. <laughs> my race is pretty fucked up in many ways. I, I mean, what I'm saying is we need to fix it. We need to stop being so jealous of each other. Stop competing against each other. We need to get together, work together, support each other. You know, if somebody needs a job, find him a job or help him out until we get a job for him. Uh, that's how it should be. We need to be like the Jews. I mean, look at the Jewish people. They, they, they support each other all the time. They give each other jobs. They network. And we can't stand each other. We Mexicans, like, we just, like, I don't know what's wrong. Mexican man. Eh. <laughs> what's wrong with my people? I want to understand my people. I, you'll never understand us. We are a very cheesy 
very cheesy, mysterious, well, cheesy still, enigma. <laughs> what? A quesadilla? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Obama corrupt. <laughs> he promised us green cards. No, bitch, shut up. He didn't promise you anything. Well, actually, he did. He promised what? I don't know what he promised. Anyway, he did that executive order, right? No. Uh, so, uh, you know, and I want to say something about that, though, and that is that's kind of like a wishy-washy thing, wasn't it? I mean, according to the Constitution, and let me tell you, there are people out there, you know, the teabaggers who say, well, we are constitution. We are constitutionalists. We we know what the constitution says. Well, here's what the constitution says, asshole, jerk, dumbass, freakazoid. Listen up. In the constitution, it says clearly that the president has the power to give pardons to anybody who has committed an offense against the United States. That's what it says there in the constitution. But what we have here, though, and here's the tricky part, is not really a pardon, is it, huh? Because it's like it's like a temporary thing. Like, okay, the next president has to sign it into, not sign it into law, but it has to continue the executive order of not really pardoning you, but not persecuting you. See, the way they should have been is you go in front of an immigration judge. The immigration judge says, yes, you were here, you're here legally, and orders a deportation. But the Department of Justice comes in and says, no, the president has given you a pardon and you no long, and the deportation order is no longer. Uh, we're not going to enforce that, your pardon, and now you can get a green card. That's how it should have happened. But now we have this thing where, where uh, only the people who were, whose children are here legally, I see what, the anchor babies, right, yeah. Okay, that's good, but the, 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 there's so many other people, though. So many other people. And then there was this gay group, a uh, bunch of us Mexican homos got not really happy about it because a lot of us homos don't have kids, though. So how does this work for them? I don't know. So, it, yeah, it, it should have been just a full pardon. And the reason why the president, President Obama, Obama corrupt. Why he didn't do that is because he wanted to make this issue a campaign issue for 2016. The Democrats said to Obama, hey, why don't you just make it something that's only until you leave so that way when the election comes in next year, fuck, we'll make this an, a, again Another campaign issue will rile up the Mexicans and the Hispanic base with the Hispanic voters, those who are legally here, who want to make this an issue, and we will we will get the support from the uh, from the Mexicans, the Hispanic voters, and we will win the White House again. That's a good idea. But I just want to say that hey, you had this chance to just issue a pardon. I mean, we fucking pardoned Nixon, that motherfucker. You know what he did in that White House? All that shit that he said and uh, the crime that he committed. I mean, that, that was a serious crime. Crossing the border illegally is not really a serious crime. It's not. Oh, no, it's not. It's not even It's not even a crime. It's, it's a civil infraction. People don't know that. Yeah, so what you do is if you get... If you cross the border illegally, what, what happens is you get arrested, detained, actually not arrested, they detain you. So there's a difference between arrest, detain you. They detain you and then they deport you. That's how it should have happened. But uh, that doesn't happen here. Eh? What did he say? Nothing. Just ignore me. <laughs> like I'm telling you, as we eat my enchiladas, I make good enchiladas, by the way. Yes, they're double dipped. Huh? Double dipped? Yes, double dipped, homo style. (laughs) 
You will love my homo style Mexican dishes, by the way. Homo style, yes. Everything has chili, chile, and creamy cheese.、Mm. And a lot of us Mexican dudes, you know, we don't. We are uncut, right? And our cocks, we, we have foreskin. And sometimes we forget to wash that shit. And, phew, man, there are some guys I, I sucked off in the past. And, wow, I'm like, hey, did you know that there's a thing here that you have to peel back and you have to kind of put some water in it? <laughs> okay, what the queso? Yeah. <laughs> Smell that Mexican r e c a z o n cheese. <laughs> uh, enjoy it while you can. Enjoy it while you can. Yes. Look,、oh、my voice is going away <laughs> from doing that. <coughs> Fucking shit. Anyway. <clears throat> What's wrong with your voice? It's all that cum I had. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember. You remember? I remember. You remember? I remember. I remember. You suck my dick. <laughs> And, you know, we Mexicans, we're perverted. See, that's another thing, too. Another issue. We think too much with our dicks, man. I mean, the, there are times where、like, we have to settle down and, you know, business. When we sit down and do business, whether it's politics or immigration, or,、uh, we're still thinking with our dicks. You know, I, I, was just,、uh, I was not at a rally, but I was looking at one. And man, there was this guy tried, you know, hitting on this chick, and then I don't know, he was weird.、Uh, they were having a protest, not a pro- like a rally kind of thing you know, for immigrants before Obama did the executive order. And You know, everybody was, you know, with candles and stuff. And, and then some of these guys were there, like, looking at chicks and went, grabbing their dicks. And then one of them looked at me. He's like, hey, you want to come over and suck my dick? I'm like, what the? <laughs> hey, look,、uh, I have nothing against that. I, I would, if I really couldn't see him in the dark, but、uh, if, he was look- if he was kind of okay looking, I, yeah, I would. I just need a few beers and call it an, an evening, I guess. Fine.、Uh, like to enjoy a beer and a blowjob. <laughs> my people. My people. <laughs>